Aloha everybody. I'm Gene Tamashiro. I'm a sovereign Hawaiian national and I am lawful in my own country. Oh, well, by the way, if you woke up in Hawaii, you woke up in Hawaiian Kingdom, Kohawa'i Pai Aina. I came to this realization maybe 15 years ago. Started to look into it, you know, when I found out what happened to our queen in 1893 when they unlawfully arrested her. And we've been under a 127 year occupation by the United States Federal Corporation. Corporation, you heard me right. It is a corporation. If you look up United States Code, Article 28, Section 3002, Line 15, they tell you United States equals Federal Corporation. And it's important to remember that there is no authority uh, for any Congress to create a federal corporation, let alone a foreign federal corporation. Uh, there's no authority for that in the Constitution. And so, way back then, in 1871, when they created the District of Columbia, they basically told the world, yes, we're a corporation now, and you are no longer under the Creator's natural law justice. Well. That fraud has been going on, and 22 years after that, in 1893, they arrested our queen. So we've been under occupation by the U.S. corporation, we being Hawaiian nationals of all colors. We've been under this occupation 127 years, and come January 17th, uh, 2021, it will be 128 years. And I'll bring that date up one more time at the end, because there's a positive remedy to all of this. But people have asked me um, in this time of the COVID lockdown um, about the experience I had when I got kidnapped by county cops uh, in uh, Kona side, uh, Kahalu Beach Park. And um, a bunch of Hawaiians of all colors and sovereign Americans, uh, we were sitting down and having a conversation and, and doing a teaching and a learning and a sharing. Nobody's wearing a mask. There are about 40 of us, people sitting side by side, no mask, no distance. Um, and everything was just going fine. We went for about two hours and it was a live streaming. We had people, uh, legal people from the continent, you know, chiming in, speaking, and it was it was a very good day for learning and sharing, and we felt very positive. But at the end, just as we we're actually literally wrapping up, saying goodbye, the police show up. And at first, just three. Um, and um, we decided, because they obviously they wanted us to break up immediately, and so we thought, or I thought, and so did a lot of the other people, that it would be a good opportunity to educate the people that have sworn an oath to serve and protect through the U.S. Constitution. And um, we had uh, circulated a notice for medical liability and trespass of unalienable rights, and 40 people signed it. And uh, it's, I don't have the document memorized, but basically we all, all people in the unincorporated Constitutional Republic United States of America, which became a federal corporation in 1871. And those of us who love Hawaiian Kingdom, Ko Hawaii Pai Aina, our founding document recognizing the Creator's Law as codified in the Declaration of Rights, 1839. So our unalienable rights, no matter what your political status is, what your venue, you know, this, your status, your nationality is a matter of choice, but you were born with God-given unalienable rights. And everybody on this soil is protected, whether you're American through the Declaration of Independence, 1776, or if you're Kohawai Pai Aina, 1839, Kawikea Oli Kamehameha III. So these are some of the background information that um, we wanted to explain to the law enforcers of the state of Hawaii and the county of Hawaii. These were county police. Um, they wouldn't have it. They wouldn't listen. 
they basically served us notice and said, if you don't break up right now, citations are coming and handcuffs. You will get arrested. I call it kidnapping. And it is kidnapping or threat of kidnapping because if you have unalienable rights and you were born with that and other people trespass, remove the right to full disclosure and substantive due process, they're harming you. They're stealing your unalienable rights. That's a crime. Okay. And so we're there to peacefully educate people, serve them notice, but they would not have it. Break up now. The guy knew me by name already. He says, Gene. And I do. I, I know the police. I know the judges. I know the politicians, particularly on this island. I've been on a what is now going on nine year journey, clarifying my status. We'll talk about that because you need to do that. You need to remember who you are, where you are with evidence, and also what is the law? What is the law of this soil? So basic information to, to share because someone is telling me I must, I cannot, I will do whatever they say. And I ask, by what authority are you making these claims? They wouldn't hear it. They said, Gene, you either break this all up now, everybody leave, or you're going to get arrested. Um, some people decided they would leave, and, and some people started to go. I chose another course because I kept my cool. I, I got as animated as I am right now. I didn't get loud. I didn't swear. All I said is, no, I'm not leaving because I have some clarifications to make and you need to hear because you're trespassing on my rights. You're the guy doing harm. Um, he wouldn't have it. Two guys circled around behind me and he just went like this and they grabbed my arms. I didn't resist. This happened before. They handcuffed me and then our friends all start to flip out, right? Because we thought we were at least going to have an Aloha Truth conversation, get that on film, but they decided to bully us. So uh, it got quite raucous. And I'm grateful that my friends, the Wahinis, went wild. <laughs> and other people were saying, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You swore an oath to the U.S. Constitution. And the people stood up, and I was very proud of them. But the police, um, it was just a deaf ear. They picked up the phone. And then very quickly, there were more cops than people there to arrest. And uh, I was taken to the car. Uh, you know, they were a little bit rough. But it was interesting, one of the cops said, you know, Gene, why do you guys do this? You know, we got better things to do than coming and, you know, breaking up this, this kind of uh, illegal activity. And I said, no. There's nothing more important than you actually protecting our unalienable rights. That is the primary mission of good government. And, you know, what's wrong with this picture here? So they put me in the car. People are um, very um, angry on the outside. Once again, I'm proud of all our people, the, the Kane and Wahinis, who spoke out against this tyranny. Four other Wahinis were uh, kidnapped on that day. Um, so I'm in the car. I'm the first guy they throw in the car. And one of the police officers came to me. He's going to drive me, you know, to book me, to, you know, take me to the jail. And he gets in the car. He takes off his mask. And he says, Gene, I'm sorry. He doesn't look at me. He's just talking to the windshield. I'm in the back. And uh, I'm sorry, I've I seen your videos, and I wholly agree in principle with what you're saying and what you're doing. Um, so I said, well, so why am I, you know, being kidnapped? And he says, you know, it's very difficult because I have a contract. I said, yeah, you got a contract. You got a contract primarily to serve and protect in the truth. 
the U.S. Constitution. And he goes, I feel like I'm stuck. You know, I got a family to feed, and I'm sorry. And we don't, well, maybe some guys like to do it, but he said, I don't like to do this. And a lot of them don't. I asked him right then, I said, you know, you're apologizing to me, but you're still harming me. You're facilitating this harm. And I said, what is the value of your oath? Because I don't want to impose on your ability to make money so you can support your family. But you are supporting tyranny. And you are, you are stealing my unalienable God-given rights. And that's why we're here to protect that. And you guys are just perjuring your oath. What is the value of your oath? And he didn't, he didn't say anything. So it was, from that point on, it was a kind of a quiet, long drive to the jail cell where um, I got put in uh, the jail and another officer, two more, came up to me, took off their mask and said, I'm sorry. And it's really sad that people are not educated enough, not empowered, and our leadership don't speak the, about the importance of being in honor, of actually recognizing the critical importance of standing up for what is porno and true and lawful, and condemning and holding people accountable when they perjure their oath. And this is going on, it's been going on in Hawaii for 127 years. and. Uh, and it's about time, ladies and gentlemen. So, okay, so um, I'm going to go to court. Uh, they drag me in. I'm under duress. Of course, I am, for the public record, going on nine years, uh, sovereign Hawaiian national. And I always ask, by what authority are you making your claims? It goes in one ear and out the other. So I'm in court. And... Uh, Oh, wow, hang on, back up. I actually faced this judge three times. One time while I'm in jail on this little screen, okay, after three and a half days. I'm, on a, I'm seeing her, she's got her mask on on a little screen. They got me locked up. They put, they put a mask on my face and I have to talk to the judge. I clarify my status once again. This is who I am, this is where I am, this is the law, by what authority. It goes in one year and out the other. Okay, you got to come in. This is your arraignment. We'll talk about it when you come in uh, next month. So, I come back. I'm under duress. That's why I come back. I don't have to come back. They've already been in default. They don't clarify their status. I come back. There's a judge. There's no prosecutor. Where's the prosecutor? She is on a screen. And after I clarify my status, who I am, where I am, and what is the law, I ask, is there a man or woman here that is claiming I've done any harm? I'm looking for the individual that claimed I did harm. Nobody speaks up. Nobody raises their hand. So I look at the screen, and there is a lady in a suit, and I say, you must be the prosecutor. You're the person individual that's claiming I did harm. Is that right? And she goes, you guys might have heard this before if you've been in the court system. The state of Hawaii is charging you. I go, the state of Hawaii is not a kane or a wahine. The state of Hawaii is a corporate fiction entity. I'm looking for the man or woman who says, Gene Tamashiro did harm. Must be you, I point at the screen. She backs off. I said, what's your name? The prosecutor. I can't remember her name. I think it was Vargas. At this point, I forgot. She goes, no, the state of Hawaii is charging you. I go, no. I'm looking for the man or the woman. You're the one bringing it up now. I want your phone number. You're attacking me. I'm coming after you. Peacefully. I want your phone number. When the judge hears that, the judge knows I am moving in natural law justice. 
because I'm I'm lawfully adjudicating. I'm asking to see the person accusing me of harm. That's when the judge says, okay, we're done today. Gene, you come back. A month later, we come back. Again, under duress. I don't mind because this is all about education and holding people accountable peacefully because the huli is coming and the stage is being set. So I see her again. I see the judge again. And this time, the prosecutor is there. And once again, we end up at the same exact place. I'm looking for the man or woman that says, I did harm. Is that you? Same thing. Judge goes, we're done today. See, so the judge, the judge didn't walk out of the room, but she left the field of lawful battle for the right. second time. For the second time she did. Okay? And um, she gets frustrated because I say, well, I'm going to come back again. We're going to always end up at the same point where I'm asserting my unalienable right and you're running from the field of battle. We're done already. And I make that announcement. This case is dismissed. She gets mad. Tells the bailiffs, court marshals there, the, you know, the sheriffs, local boys, and they're looking down, they're looking to the side, and I go, listen, I know how this goes, you know how this goes, I can walk out on my own, they know, and we walk outside into the hall, and those police officers apologize to me. So, you know, you guys, everybody knows the emperor has no clothes. And, you know, I, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a, well, let's put it this way. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a registered British accreditation regency bar attorney. But I know how law works, and it's very simple, yeah? What's the truth? Was any harm done? And what is the status of agreements, contracts, treaties? You know, be truthful, do no harm, honor your word. That's God's law. That's natural law. Yeah, common law. It's the law. It's the only law. So we have all been fooled into believing that law is this corporate presumption here in, in Hawaii after a 127-year corporate occupation. Okay. They put between my second time I see the judge and the third time I see the judge... They put a little, uh, a tag, what do, you, what do you call that? A tether, electronic tether on my leg. After the second time, I says, okay, I got to get this taken off. All right? Nobody says anything. So I leave the courthouse, and I go to what they call intake services. And I tell the nice ladies working at intake services, your boss, the judge, I guess that's your boss, she left the field of lawful battle twice already. I've, I have a right to take this off, and I'm going to cut this off unless you cut it off. And they said, sorry, Mr. Thomas Sherrill, we, we can't cut it off unless there's a court order to cut it off. And I said, no, the law and the judgment has already been confirmed, and it's on your public record recordings. So if you want to add on to the harm, Okay, that's your choice. But I'm just telling you what occurred and your judge is already in default and now she left the field of lawful battle. So if you don't cut it off, I'm going to cut it off. Do you want to be, you know, on the same team as your judge? And they looked at each other, um, the gal and her boss. And intake services made the intelligent decision to cut it off. Wow. So they cut it off, and I says, oh, by the way, I'm going to give you a receipt. And so whenever I go to court, I handwrite who I am, where I am, what is the law, and by what authority, yeah, is anybody claiming I'm doing harm because I got kidnapped. I give the judge, the prosecutor, and now intake services copies of this. I get them to stamp it. So it's in the public record that we're doing our due diligence. Ladies and gentlemen, 
That's how law works. Okay? Just stand in honor in what you know is true. But you got to stand up. You can't just have paperwork because we have 127 years of forensic evidence, okay, public record evidence all over the place. I know you guys know. But just paperwork is not enough. You must bring flesh and bone, you know, your honor, your presence in the space to back up the truth and the forensic evidence. So, I know there's a lot of pilikia, a lot of harm, a lot of controversy on all islands. And I get phone calls from every island, water's being stolen, rights are being taken, people are getting kidnapped, you know, due process is being ignored, etc., etc. Okay, what we have to do, instead of trying to address all those fires, hundreds of fires, ongoing, all the time, we're going to take the head off the Babylon beast with aloha, okay, surgically, peacefully with Aloha on January 17th, that's a Sunday, January 17th, 2021, on the 128-year anniversary of the unlawful arrest of our Queen Liliokalani, okay? So I'm asking everybody, sovereign Hawaiians, sovereign Americans, and any sovereign individual, you don't necessarily have to have a political venue that you're, you know, attached to. I am a sovereign Hawaiian. I choose that. Yeah, and I also choose it. It's a political choice. Nationality is a political choice. And I choose that. But any sovereign people, because there's only one law on earth, we're going to return the Creator's law back to Hawaii. Back to, <laughs> yeah. back to Hawaii on the 128 year anniversary of the arrest of our Queen. Okay? And everybody should be there because I'm looking forward to 10 to 20,000 people being there. And, you know, we had 20,000 people march down Kalakaua Avenue to protest against the situation, the TMT for Mauna Kea. But that was really only a protest. This is very different. All those same people will be empowered and educated to clarify, confirm, and peacefully enforce the law of this soil, the law of the Most High. Okay, so thank you very much. If you're interested in information uh, regarding that event, you can go to hkga.global. That's Hawaiian Kingdom Governance Authority dot global. We are interim governance. Yeah, just for the time being, so we have an administrative process to work in comity with the occupying corporation. It's all peaceful. No one has to get harmed. No one will be harmed, and we will hooli the world on Restoration Day. Yay!